Well, good morning, folks. Uh, today's May 27th, 2023, and we're here at the Pacific Pinball Museum Annex Warehouse in Alameda, California, where we store upwards of 1,300 individual pinball titles in our Pacific Pinball Museum collection. And today, um, what we're going to be talking about is a couple of uh, pinball games uh, designed by a very prolific designer of pinball machines by the name of Ed Krinsky. And he's not exactly a household name up there with, say, Steve Kordek from Williams or even Wayne Nyans from Gottlieb, but he did have a um, long, at least almost 20-year career at Gottlieb. And before he came to Gottlieb, though, he worked for seven years for a company called J.H. Keeney. And today we're going to go through, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of his very unusual uh, game designs while he was still at Keeney before he joined Gottlieb. So uh, the Ed Krinsky story is kind of an is a very interesting one because uh, he doesn't get a lot of attention and, and notoriety the way other pinball game designers did over the years. He was somewhat of a not reclusive, but it's just not a lot's known about his background or his history. Um, but he did, he was responsible for some very interesting innovations uh, while at Gottlieb in particular. But he was born uh, in 1927 and lived to be uh, 77 years old. I believe he passed away in 2004. Uh, he's, at the age of 29 in 1956, he joined up with uh, Keeney. And in 1956, this was the heyday of pinball manufacturers and the pinball coin-op industry it was really dominated by the likes of David Gottlieb and Company, Williams, uh, even to some degree Genco, uh, Exhibit, and United that were all making flipper pinballs uh, and making lots of money at it. But Keeney, uh, two names are absent from that list, Keeney, uh, who really in their 30-year existence from 34 through about 1964 only made six actual flipper pinballs. And then you had Bally that's absent from that list because they were making bingo pinballs starting in 1951 and throughout the 50s. And Bally didn't make their first flipper pin till 1960, I believe it was. But um, <clears throat> Ed, Ed Krinsky, at age of 29, started out at Keeney. And um, while he was there for, I think, seven years, he, he left Keeney in 1963 to join up with Gottlieb. Um, Keeney was uh, a manufacturer of gambling devices primarily. They, had, they were called electronic stand-up console machines. And they were basically slot machines or one ball games. And uh, as I said, they made very few pinballs in their existence. They only made really uh, six. Uh, but they made some bingos, and but made their living primarily on gambling devices. And um, these two machines we're going to look at today are two of the examples that Keeney had made. In the, this was uh, El, Old Plantation in 1961. The second one is El Rancho that was made a year later, 1962. They ended up making only four such titles in this uh, design and uh, layout. One was, another one was called Star Time, and the other one was uh, Hacienda. But what's interesting about these games is when you first walk up to them, they appear to be pinball machines. In fact, this looks like a three-player pinball machine. This is the player one score, player two, and maybe player three. That one looks like a two-player machine. But actually, Keeney, in, with their proclivity toward gambling devices and slot machines, this is really a slot machine that's camouflaged as a pinball machine. It has some pinball aspects to it, but primarily it's a slot machine. And the way this works is when you start the game up, uh, right now it's got this, the way this scoring works is where it says total score. This is how many replays that you've been, the player has won. This red uh, dials are the play, this actual score of the player when he starts to play a game. The third three reels are how many credits that have been played. So if you were to walk over to the bartender when it's time to go home from the bar or the bowling alley, wherever you'd find this, you would subtract how many games you've played versus how many you won, and you would say, bartender, you owe me 20 credits, and you'd get 20 dimes back or $2. But uh, the slot machine aspect is interesting because it, 
If you look at other Caney uh, stand-up console games that, that were basically purely slot machines, they always had these nine different symbols. And when you start the game up, different symbols are going to be projected in this Panoscope unit. So when, when Ed Krinsky left Keeney in 1963, Keeney really only had one more year of existence. They were out of business by 1964. And that was primarily due to all the anti-gambling legislation that had gone on in the United States starting in the early 50s with the Johnson Act, which banned the transportation of bingo and one ball payout games interstate, except in Idaho and Nevada. Uh, states like South Carolina and Tennessee still allowed them in, but basically by the end of the late 50s, in, in fact in 1962, uh, President Kennedy signed a bill called the Gambling Devices Act that basically put an end to bingo games. But Krinsky uh, left Keeney in 1963 at the age of, uh, I guess he was only 36 at the time, and joined up with Gottlieb. Now Gottlieb again had Wayne Nyans that was still there. Uh, and over a 20 year career, uh, Ed Krinsky came up with some really innovative uh, things that we take for granted in today's pinball machines. Um, the first game he ever designed at Gottlieb was a game called Dodge City in 1964. Uh, but the first innovation that he's credited with is 1965, a game called Bank a Ball, where um, on the out lanes when you lose your ball, he actually he invented a wire form that would transfer the ball back to the flippers. And that was the first game that used that, where we take that so for granted in today's pinball machines, that was the actual first introduction of it in 1965. The second innovation that he's credited with is the carousel target in 1966 that appeared on a game called Dancing Lady and then a year later on King's, or, uh, King of Diamonds. Um, but it's a carousel target that spins horizontally and it was mounted in the center of the play field. Um, the third credit uh, or innovation he's credited with is a game in 1969 called Airport where they had a, it was called a Vera target where the harder you hit the target, uh, uh, it would swing and give award more points. So that that was a, that appeared on a two-player game, Airport, later on in uh, subsequent games like Wild Wild West, or even Play Ball, and games like that. And then the fourth innovation was in 1971, uh, with the use of um, multiple banks of drop targets, not just one drop target, but in the case of 2001, you had ten drop targets all connected in the same bank. Uh, so that, that was used later on in El Dorado where you had 15 drop targets as 2001 had 20, 20 drop targets. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that those inventions were all credited to Ed Krinsky. And he was uh, at Gottlieb till about 1984, um, about a 20 year career. And then in, in 1984 Gottlieb uh, was bought by Columbia Pictures and Columbia Pictures promptly folded the pinball division into something called Millstar. And um, Gottlieb was always a very family friendly and close knit company up until they got bought. And after they got bought, designers like Ed and uh, Wayne Nyans and other people that worked there said it was just never the same. And it was a kind of a toxic kind of atmosphere. And he left on very bad terms. Um, in fact, he was, <laughs> Krinsky was quoted as saying that the name Millstar itself, if you spell it backwards, it spells out rat slime. <laughs> and he was, he was not a happy camper when he left, and it was very, he left on very bad terms. And uh, then he kind of just dropped out of sight, and no one, he didn't attend pinball shows, the industry shows like Pinball Expo in Chicago, and there was no one, there's no real documented, documented interviews with the guy except Michael Shaloub from Australia, uh, late late in his life, but he passed away at age 77 in 2004. Okay, now I'd like to uh, talk about two really interesting games that uh, Keeney designed uh, in 1961 and 1962. They actually, uh, the company actually came out with four different such titles. The, we, at uh, the PPM, we own three of the four. Uh, the, what's not pictured here is a game called Star Time, and then the fourth one was Hacienda. And Hacienda is different from the other three in that it doesn't have the uh, panoscopic projection unit. Um, but these are, these are pretty similar games, but there are some key differences that I wanted to, that I will, will be illustrating as we walk through. So the first game we're going to talk about here uh, is Old Plantation that Keeney made in 1961. And 
remember Keeney was really uh, had a reputation with gambling devices and slot machines. And uh, first thing we notice about this game is if you were to walk into a bar or a bowling alley, it looks like a three-player pinball machine. This would be player one score, this would be player two, and this would possibly be player number three. But act actually what this is, is a cleverly designed s slot machine disguised as a pinball machine because it doesn't have flippers is one thing that uh, get, is the dead giveaway. The other thing is you'll notice there are nine different symbols here that are very similar to Keeney's electronic console games that were slot machines. These are winning combinations uh, and the better combinations award different numbers of replays. But the minimum that you need here is one horseshoe showing on the far left. That would award you two replays. If you had all three of the red arrows, for example, you would win 93 replays. And the way this works, though, is what's so ingenious about it is to fool the cops or the, the law uh, folks that were uh, look on the lookout for gambling devices. If they were to walk into a bar, this does not look like a slot machine. It looks like a three-player pinball. Um, but the, the, the significance of these is the total score is the number of credits that the player has won. This high score, these three reels, are the actual score on the play field that the player has achieved. And the subtotal is the number of games that have been played. So when it comes time to leave the bar or the location and the player wanted to go home, he would tell the bartender, I have 30 credits, I've only played 10, you owe me 20 uh, dimes. And he would cash out. And then the operator would press a button on the bottom of the game to take the credits back to zero. So that, and when you first start the game, uh, well, actually, the more points you score on the play field, the more replays you could win. So let's say uh, you, you managed to have a horseshoe showing in this position. The most replays you could win is two credits if you achieved a minimum score on the play field of 190 points. That was the threshold for winning any replays at all. And basically, it's imp almost impossible not to get 190 points. It's pretty, you, you can do a blindfolded. The hard part was getting to 290. If you made it to 290 points, this column would then move over to here and light up for a greater number of replays. So instead of two, uh, this would be three, and then this would move up to like 120. And if you had 390 and 490 or 590 or more, you could win all the way up to 460 replays. Um, and I'll demonstrate this. Uh, we'll, we'll start a game now and we'll show you how it, how it works. But the first thing you'll see is a panoscope that spits up some different symbols here. So we'll start that. All right, so we, we're in luck. We got one horseshoe on the far left. So right now, if we get a score of 190 or more, we're going to be in line for two credits. Okay, so now we're going to walk through the play field real briefly. And basically, everything is worth 10 points that you hit. These passive bumpers, it has six of those. Then it has three pop bumpers. But again, those are all worth 10 points. Then it has 50-point lanes that alternate. Every time you hit a 10, this dot moves. This is 50, this rebound. This is 50 points. And then three more 50 that alternate. Um, but no flippers, no kickers. And uh, not a lot of skill involved other than nudging. You can f nudge it a fair amount, but it does have a tilt like every other game. Um, so I'll, this is 10 points. That's 10 points. This is 10 points. Here's 50. Here's 10. Here's 10. Here's 50. And again, these alternate every time you hit a 10. So here we're going to start a game and I'll show you the panoscopic uh, symbols and what we're trying to achieve is like on a regular slot machine, the higher number of, you know, three of a kind or the red uh, arrows that are wild. So because the better the combination, the more uh, replays we could potentially win. So let's, I'm going to start now and watch the panoscopic units. Ooh. Oh, okay. Well, we got two horseshoes. That's that's pretty good. That's uh, better than just two replays. Here we can win uh, six replays if we get 190 points. 
Shall we play this game and see what we get that? Or you want to try another combination? All right, let's try another combination. I'm not satisfied with six replays. <laughs> not a winner. We had two stars, but we needed a star in the center position. Oh. All right, well, we got the one horseshoe, but that's only two credits. <clears throat> Hmm, I'm detecting a pattern here. This is not very, I've got, I've got the dial set on liberal, so, and, uh, we, I, oh, two stars, but still not a winner. It's a very stingy game. <laughs> And, you know, oftentimes with slot machines or even bingo games, it's a matter of how much time the player had in mind. I mean, were you in between uh, bus stops or you only had 10 minutes or were you going to be there for hours? You know, if you're going to be there for hours, it, it's, it's good to try to, to get uh, as many replays as you can to cash out. But if you only got a few minutes, uh, it's a bit frustrating. <laughs> Okay, here we're going to play, play a few more games until we get a winning combination, hopefully soon. We've, we've played uh, 12 credits already and we haven't... Oh! Ah, came close. <laughs> no. No. Yes! Ah, two hearts and a star. so close <laughs> it just keeps you making you want to put more and more coins in the thing oh almost again we're getting close <laughs> ah, okay. oh, there's our there's our one horseshoe for two credits but that's the red arrow is wild but that still isn't going to help us enough here And now we've played our 40 credits. So now the credit button won't work anymore. Now we have to actually put coins in. And you can see the, 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 the reels all reset. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through Keeney's El Rancho, their second title of four. And this was made a year later after Old Plantation in 1962. And there's some key differences between Old Plantation and El Rancho. And the first one is, instead of three score reels in the center uh, for the player's score. It's light bulb scoring, old-fashioned light bulb scoring. It keeps track of the player's score. But the total score, that's the number of replays the player has won. Subtotal, how many replays that you've played. The other key difference between the two machines is this. Uh, there's a star here under the sun. Randomly it lights up. And if you start a game and it lights up, even though you don't have a winning combination on the Panoscope, you could still win replays if you earn enough points on the, just by playing the game. So uh, these don't even come into play in terms of winning replays. Uh, El Plantation, or Plantation, Old Plantation doesn't have that feature. The really cool other difference between the two games is, you see this here that says hit and miss. Um, this, uh, after your second ball, Let's say you uh, have the right number of uh, symbols and you're, you're in line to win some replays because your score was above 190. After your second ball, you have a choice to make. You could either press a button on the lockdown bar that says take score, in which case you'll be awarded your replays, or you could press the button that says take ball. And if you press take ball, you get a third ball. And on your third ball, hit and miss toggle every 10 points that are scored and again everything is worth 10 but if you drain your ball and it happens to say hit you get to keep your awarded your replays that you were in line for unfortunately if you drain your ball and it happens to say miss all your re you don't get any replays so now we're actually going to play a game on El Rancho and I'll demonstrate the game features uh, 
One, one other difference between El Rancho and Old Plantation is El Rancho had the 50 point uh, lanes that would alternate when the moving light. This is fixed at 10, 50, and 20, 10, 20, and 50, 10, 20, and 50. That's really the only real play field uh, difference. Oh, this is only worth 20 instead of 50. This is only worth 20. Other, everything else, your pop bumpers are 10 and your passive bumpers are 10. So we'll start the game. Oh, almost a winner. Okay. All right. We'll we'll shoot one ball and we'll show you how it's how the scoring works. All right. So like old plantation, it's almost impossible not to get 190 after two balls. And 190, 190, 290, 390, those were always the scoring threshold. So had we had a winning combination, we would have, we were at 220 so far. Uh, looks like we're gonna get 230. Okay, well, let's bump this up a little bit. Right now we're at 230. All right, so now we're gonna resume our play here and we're still, We've only played one ball so far. We've managed to uh, earn 280 points. As soon as we earn 10 more points, we'll be at the second threshold of scoring. So this uh, column is going to move over to the right with a greater number of replays to be awarded. 290. See, that's not do what I thought it was going to do. There we go. Okay, we're at 430 now. 480. 530. So you can see how we're, we're winning an increasing number of replays for the higher the scores that we get. I'm going to go ahead and shoot this ball. And after the second ball, we're going to have a choice to make. Oh, already it's taken. I guess this is our third ball, by the way. Okay, this is our third ball. Now, you'll notice these started to light up. Every 10 points, this is going to toggle from miss to hit. If we drain the ball on our third ball and it happens to say hit, it's going to allow us to keep our four replays that we, it's going to award four replays to us. If it happens to say miss though, and the ball drains, where the miss light is on, uh, we're not going to win any replays. Not a winning combo. As you can see, you could, you could put up, you could put in several dollars worth of dimes before earning a winning combination, um, like most slot machines. Oh, there we are. Okay, this is the best combination we've had all day. Three stars. So now we're, we're going to win reading between in the back glass at least uh, probably 20, maybe even 30 replays or possibly more, depending on how, how many uh, points we score. We'll just to speed up the process, let's get 190. Okay, it looks like three stars is 16 credits. Um, so, okay, we'll drain that ball. Now we're, now we're into the second ball. See how many points we can win here. Let's go, uh, let's build up the credits to the next column over. Now we're up to 24 replays. Now we're up to 30 replays for the stars, the three stars. Uh, and we'll see what happens after the second ball. So today we're going to look at a game that was actually the last of the Keeney pinball machines that they ever made as a company in 1964 by the, the title is Arrowhead. Uh, in their entire 30 year existence from 1934 to 1964, the Keeney company only made seven uh, flipper, actual flipper pinballs. What they made mostly were gambling devices, one ball payouts and slot machines or the cleverly disguised uh, slot machine um, 
games like El Rancho and our old plantation and um, Star Time and Hacienda. But this was the last uh, flipper pin that, that Keeney designed and uh, it was designed by Ed Krinsky. And uh, it's hard to say how, how many they actually made of this model, but uh, the one before it, Colorama, a few uh, months before, was also a two-player game and featured the, w one thing about Keeney games is you notice they have colored score reels instead of just the plain white with the black lettering. And they also lit up from the backside, which is pretty cool. I think Chicago Coin, a lot of their pins, uh, flipper pins, did that too, but it's a pretty neat feature. Um, the other titles uh, that Krinsky designed at Keeney were um, High Straight in 1959, and also Go-Kart and uh, Poker Face, and then a game called Eleven Bells, which was really uh, a knockoff of the One Ball Bally games that had uh, just the nine uh, pop bumpers that you would hit, and then a possible getting a 10 and 11 with a kick-out hole. But the only difference was he copied that design, but he put in two flippers uh, into it to make it an fl actual flipper pin. But um, yeah, Keeney, unfortunately, uh, late 63, early 64, went out of business. And they, uh, I think they tried to you know, produce some flipper pinballs, but I think their, their roots were really in gambling devices. And unfortunately, the handwriting was on the wall with the Johnson Act in the early 50s and then the Gambling Devices Act in 1962 signed by President Kennedy. That really put the, the end to bingos and, and gambling devices and payout machines and um, rather than be successful at producing flipper pins the way Gottlieb always did because they they completely eschewed uh, bingos and gambling uh, or Williams or even Bally. Bally saw the handwriting on the wall and they started to produce flipper pins starting in 60 or 61 but Keeney for whatever reason just uh, completely folded. I think they exported a fair number of their flipper pins overseas, but we're really lucky to have an example of an arrowhead. You never see this game. I, I think it was very low production, and uh, I, I'd never seen one other than the one in our collection. So here's a walkthrough of the Keeney Arrowhead game, and as you'll notice, um, as soon as we start the game, the player one score reels will light up from the rear side. So first player up. Uh, but you can actually play two players, and when you, as soon as we press the, two, uh, the credit button again to initiate the second player, the player two score reels will light up. Okay, so now we'll walk you through some of the play field features. And what, one thing you'll notice immediately if you're familiar with other pinball machines made by other manufacturers is this layout of the inlays at an angle looks very similar to a lot of Bally. Uh, games. That was one thing I, I noticed here. And the other thing is we've got a motor that changes this light uh, every few seconds from 30 to 30 to 30 to 30. But when the yellow light's lit, you get 100 points. Plus it raises these two drop targets here. And when you hit the drop targets, they're each worth 100 points, which is big points on this game because it's the maximum that this target could be worth, maximum that one, this one and this one can be worth, but it starts out at 10 each time. So there's our, there's our 100 points, there's our another 100 points, but this is going to change every in a couple of seconds here. It's going to start over there, so interesting to try to time that shot. And then again, whenever you hit this one, uh, that's worth 50 now. And then it's now it's going to be worth 100. So again, that's very big points, then it resets down to 10. Um, but kind of a fun little play field. There's a lot of different things to hit, especially these drop targets. That's where your big points are. But what I've noticed is playing the game, as soon as you hit the drop target, oftentimes the ball just heads right for the out lane, uh, which was also very uh, common on, on, on Bally games. You know, we can kind of play through here. If I can. At least the, the gap between the flippers is pretty, pretty narrow. That's kind of nice. But the ball tends to drain down the side quite often. See what I mean? As soon as we hit the 100, it just goes right down the side. Very, very uh, insidious sign. Now we're on player two. Oh, oh it try, tries to go down the, drain, the, the side. Lo and behold, another side drain.
You notice these kickers tend to drop the ball right down the center as well. Oh, another side drain. What do you know? <laughs> but uh, no, it's a it's definitely a, ch a challenging and, and fun game. It's it's disappointing, or it's kind of tragic actually that this was Keeney's last pin because it's a it is kind of a fun player, and again very very rare one that just doesn't turn up very often. Oh, I heard a funny noise. I think we run a replay on points in player one. It's almost impossible to hit the, the drop target from the flipper. You've got to bounce it off one of the kicker rubbers to, hit, to make it go right into the target the way you want to. It's really hard to hit. But, you know, I see a pattern of side drains. 